Welcome back. Many might recognize him from the Yizo Yizo drama series as the straightforward principal. Then he installed fear as the manipulative funeral undertaker boss in Tatemuloi on Zone 14. I'm talking about no one other than uh, Patrick Ndlov, who is a veteran stage, television and film actor who grew up in Mohlaking Township in the West Rand. With an acting career spanning over four decades, Ndate Patrick Ndlov is one of the most acclaimed actors in the South African acting industry. Now this morning he joins us in studio to talk uh, more about his career and of course his brand new film. Ndate, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. What did you want to be when you were young? <laughs> uh, I, I was not sure. Yeah. I was not sure. But when I was at school, especially high school in the boarding school, yeah. we, we started singing. We, ah. had, we were four of us and we were singing. We had a quartet and it was like, it came to my mind that I like this. Mm. I like singing for people. You, you love know. to perform? Yes. And you were spotted by the late Prince of Theatre and that day, uh, Brad Gibson Kenta. Uh, but your parents were not in favor of mm. this whole performance thing that you, you were loving so much. Uh, How did the, uh, the late uh, Dade Kente spot you? Uh, he, we, we, then I was playing drums. Yeah. I had a set of drums. I was playing for the jazz prophets in uh -huh. Lanfondi with Sidney McClark, with the leader. Uh -huh. He came and he found us playing, so he wanted the trumpeter yeah. and the, uh, the, the saxophonist and me. Mm. But he said, you, I, I don't want you to come and play drums. I want you to come and act. Oh, wow. Then my father, <laughs> my father didn't want to see that. Man. Yeah, yeah. He came more than three times. Kohai. Mm. To ask to that your ask, parents allow Yes, you. my father refused. Oh. And what finally convinced your, your father and your, your family that it's okay, you can go ahead and do this? I went around to my mother. Oh, I, I see. I said, Mama, please, Tata no Tata, oh. I want to act. Oh, you know? but and, and Mama being gracious, yes. I'm pretty sure she found a way to convince Dad. <laughs> then he said to me, go, go, go and do it, and you must never come back and complain to me. Go. <laughs> That's how it started. And so the first time that you found yourself performing in front of an audience, mm. what was that like for you? And, and, and take us back to that memory. Uh, I, I joined Scalo mm. with Gibson Kente. Mm -hmm. And that time, Scalo had to go to Rhodesia. Then yes. it was Rhodesia, yes. it was not Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Yes. I tell you, I was sitting in that filthy bus that Gibson was driving us in. Yeah. I was like scared. Where am I going? Mm. What am I going to be doing? I rehearsed. I know the role mm. now. But I was so scared because that was my first time yeah. in Rhodesia. Not here in South Africa. Yeah. That was my first time on stage acting. And so that first time led to many times <gasps> and led to many other stages, exactly. television sets. Exactly theater stages exactly. uh, throughout your career and as it grew yes. who are the people that stood by you who supported you who wanted to make you a better performer who truly speaking there was this couple they called Tess and Don Lindbeck mm. because when I left Gibson Gende mm. I went and did Godspell mm. when the late Koki Kotalimaje resigned. I took over the role in God's spell. Yeah. He said to me, the wife of uh, the, the Lindbergh, he said to me, you are going to be a big star. Mm. Whilst we are yesing, I said, big star, what's that now? Yeah. You know? yeah. And I tell you, it was like wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. They spoke and that I positivity knew then, in your I life. knew now then, it settled in my mind mm. that... I want to act. Mm. I want to do different roles if God can help me. And look at what that self-belief has done for you and your career. You've had an absolutely successful career. Yeah, I, I, I went around many characters. Yes. You know, yes. Different characters, different roles altogether. Yes. But all the time, I managed. Yeah. I managed every character. I go deep into it. And you I do. And, and, and then I, I execute it because yeah. I dream, I sit and, and lie down and look at the ceiling and 
assimilate, you yeah. know. And, and convincingly I, so. I mean, I remember watching you on, on Yizo Yizo and Zone 14 where you were this hard man, you know. And, and I believed it. I knew you were ro acting a role, but you executed it so brilliantly that I was fearful <laughs> of you. See, you. You see, Yizo, you see, Yizo. Yes. Was one of the best things after I did Kumbula Tata. Mm. Kumbula Tata, I was still like uh, half in, half out. Mm. But when I did Yizo, Yizo was the best thing that I started saying, now I know where I want to go. Mm. Principal was so bad. Yes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> As, as a seasoned creative in, in, in this space, uh, I mean, you're still working. Tell us about this latest form uh, that you're involved in. Uh, it's Knuckle City that started uh, viewing, uh, people were viewing it from yesterday, the 28th, everywhere. Mm -hmm. We shot this thing in East London with my director sitting somewhere outside there. Mm -hmm. I tell you, Knuckle City is one of the greatest things I've done. Mm. It depicts things that happened for life, the real things, hmm. the real things. I want you, know? you to hold that thought. Yes, I will hold because it. Because we're going to take a break. We're going to still have you after the break. Okay, I want thanks. you to unpack more yes. for us. And then we'll take some questions from people who are watching at home. Okay, thank you. All right. If you've just joined us, uh, we are in conversation with a living legend who's also been on numerous TV series such as Gazlam, The Wild, Shagazulu, just to mention but a few. He is seasoned. We're going to take a break now, but when we return, uh, of course, uh, we'll be uh, taking a look at some of your tweets, your questions, and your comments. Stay with us. Justifying apartheid in any way whatsoever. But why can't you agree with it? Because it did, did wreak havoc to millions of South Africans. It did. And I apologize for that. He actually does not know, did not know, that there's a convention declaring apartheid a crime against humanity. The General Assembly labeled apartheid as a crime against humanity. There's a difference between calling something a crime, like genocide is a crime. Apartheid cannot be compared with genocide. He was making a very narrow comment. It's not only a, a, a crime against humanity, it's actually a sin. It's an unrepentant apologist of apartheid who is not willing to accept that apartheid was crime against humanity. I profusely apologize for that. At Health Talk, we don't just talk hardcore health issues. We also tell stories of those affected. You, you have a kidney that you received from your sister. What does it mean to you? Uh, I can't thank you enough. We feature a panel of experts to educate and help us understand various conditions. What is osteoporosis? Yes, often it can be confused with arthritis, but osteoporosis is a separate condition. It's a condition that causes a weak bone. We bring to light issues concerning public health. Health in South Africa depends upon your pocket, which is very unfair because life is a basic necessity. We we'll all have a right to live and to get proper health facilities. much for staying with us here on Morning Live. Now, Nako City is a film which uh, follows uh, the journey of uh, Dudunya Gama, uh, down and out aging boxer as he struggles to attain uh, the one fight that he believes will uplift his fractured family. The uh, right, uh, the film has been, of course, uh, uh, directed uh, by Lamil, uh, rather Jamil, and he is here with us in studio. But we're going to uh, get chatting with him as well. Before we do, let's take a look at some social media uh, responses, comments, and questions uh, for the legendary Ndadi Patrick Ndrov. All right, uh, this one says, Saturday greetings to you and your families. Thanks, Morning Live, uh, for bringing our stars in the house today. I just want to say to him, uh, keep it up and make South Africa proud. 
This one says, I remember him from Yizo Yizo as the principal. What is he doing right now? Well, he's busy with a very exciting film and you'll get to hear all about it here on the show. This one says, a real living legend. We are missing him. And when is he coming back? Good news. You don't have to look very far. The cinema is where you can find him. Edwin Komane says, I remember him for his uh, cruel acting on Zone 14. Big up. Yeah. <laughs> Who can forget that? Uh, Katla Mukwena says, uh, 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 Nina and Stella used to give him stress. Yo, I in that I'm sure he misses Diga and Sledge. <laughs> <laughs> and this one says, uh, besides acting, what is he doing? All right, we'll get you some of those answers. So the role that she played of Ndade Muloi seems to really have resonated with, with a lot of people. And you've worked with so many different people in, throughout your career. What was that like, working with other people who are like-minded, who have the passion for, for the same thing? And how did it help you um, grow and, 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 and become uh, the actor that you are? Yeah, you know, when, when you are in character, Mm -hmm. and you you know the character you feel it in you mm -hmm. and then the actor opposite you mm -hmm. comes and, and and gives you exactly what you want mm -hmm. I tell you then you are able to build whatever you are supposed mm -hmm. to build the two of you mm -hmm. so especially in, in zone 14 you know it, it was like like tremendous yes. because I had these two guys I had digger and yes. I had uh, uh, sledge, the sledge yeah. you know and all the time when we sit in my office and speak and I try to plan things because I was always planning things. I was very devious. I was very cruel in mm. here, you know. A bit sick-minded. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then they used to know what I want to do quickly. They yeah. used to get it quickly. And Baba, Ufunguti Ngenzu Kuti That's my boy. Puma Gemanji, go and do that. You That's know. brilliant. Let's bring in to Mihal Knuckle City. Um, the legend here in Rovo is in it. <coughs> Correct. Tell us about the film, um, where it's been shot, and uh, how did you manage to bring him back onto our screens? Well, the film was shot in um, Tanzania. Yeah. We're quite excited that it, it was released um, yesterday. Yes. It was uh, its nationwide release on cinema. So if you're out there, go see it. Uh, this weekend especially, that's very important for us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, working with a legend like this, my goodness, it's um, it's it's transmittative, you know. Um, working with someone like this, I'm, I'm very humbled because mm. obviously, as a child growing up, I mean, Baba, I used to see him in yeah. things like Shaka Zulu and yeah. what have you. So to be able to work with him now is an absolute honor. He's a completely mm. generous man, beautiful to work with on, on well, camera. Thank you for Fearless. bringing him back to us. We've missed him. Uh, talk to us about the rest of the cast and uh, just how the story develops without giving too much away. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, I mean the the lead. Is uh, Dudu, uh, who plays Dudu Nyagama is um, what's his name? Bongila Manzai. Mm -hmm. uh, Tembegile Komani plays the foil, his brother. Mm -hmm. uh, Fanny Swayisa plays their mother. We've got Uzo, Lisa Kalova, uh, Awetu Theli, uh, Atengosi Mafela. The cast is amazing. It's, yeah. it's really broad and, and exciting. Owe Ubabu Owen Sejaka is there, Siv Ngesi. You know, um, it's very, very eclectic mix of people. But Isn't dynamite. that thing for a cruel man? In Knuckle City. Ah, uh, oh. no, he's, he's a kind, beautiful, <laughs> generous man who, who likes to put salt in people's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just uh, tell us more about where people can go catch this film. I know you said cinemas for how long I is it going to be in the um, on our big screens? And uh, just take us through the, the process of having made this film and, and what it means for you to see it finally Not out sure. there. Well, the film you can see countrywide at all cinemas, uh, New Metro and Sturkinico, just look up your listings, as well as uh, independent cinemas, you know, mm -hmm. so um, I'm quite excited by the release. I'm also very humbled by the, 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 the strategy, you know, that they've really gone out in terms of trying to market the film. Yeah. It, it is designed for audiences, mm -hmm. you know, um, <clears throat> if you speak and try to make a business case around uh, filmmaking for, for indigenous filmmaking, they'll always tell you that uh, indigenous films in indigenous languages, people don't go to the cinema. Yeah. But Abando are going and uh, we really appreciate that essentially, you know. Um, it's also uh, the, the producer's birthday today, so I just want to shout out to Aww. Leila Swat. <laughs> we love you, man. Happy birthday, Happy Leila. Happy birthday, Leila. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it, it's a gift for all of us because when we read all of the Twitter feeds, Feeds, the Instagram yeah. feeds, people are literally going en masse, you know, That's full beautiful. cinemas, in, essentially. That's um, yeah, yeah, we're excited. Mm, that, that, just to close off with you and very quickly, 
your advice to young people who are in this space, this creative space, and who want to have longevity in this industry, your word of advice to them? Yeah, uh, 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 there in Mushake, where I grew up, where mm -hmm. I was born in, mm -hmm. and, and grew up, there's a group of youngsters mm -hmm. who are trying to put something together. Yeah. I am with them all the time mm -hmm. when I am free. Mm -hmm. When I'm not shooting and I'm not on call yeah. somewhere, I always phone, are you there, all yeah. of you? Then let's see how far you're going, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I am trying to build them up, you know? Absolutely. And it's, it is happening. Oh. One day you will see about it, it is happening. And thank you so much for your contribution thank and your you star much. power. We yeah, absolutely you love you. Much. Jamil, thank you so much for this so incredible much. film. And uh, hopefully people will go out there and support and mass. And uh, may you make that. lots and lots of money. Oh, and, wow. <laughs> and more and more screen time for proudly oh, uh, South African films. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, Knuckle City is a uh, South African uh, crime film directed by uh, Jamil X. T. Kubega. Uh, it was screened in the uh, Contemporary World Cinema section at the 2019 Toronto International Film Festival. We just spoke uh, to the writer-director, uh, Jamil, as well as veteran actor Patrick Androvo. Knuckle City, go out there and watch it. It is uh, screening countrywide at cinemas. We're going to take a quick break. Do stay with us. It's the month.